Yeah. What you crying for? What you complaining about? Breathe. Nah, seriously, take a breath. How many people want to do that? They can't. Walk outside. Some people ain't got freedom. They ain't gonna never see the light of day. You know what I mean? Somebody check me. I need you to edify me. You know what I'm saying? I'm just thankful for being alive. I am so thankful for being alive. Today was a good day. I opened my eyes. Yeah. I woke up today. So many can't say the same. I can't complain. Yeah. I'm thankful for being alive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't quit, I, you just hit a bump in the road You detoured when you thought you had it under control Whether you winning or losing, you stuck with your soul Focus on eternity, happiness comes and it goes Praying you'll see a miracle when they right under your nose Today you woke up and your heart was beating And you started breathing Just for you, I made this one for the road This for the car when you on the way to that job that you hate You want to keep the feast days, but it's hard to escape Yo, they requested you on the Sabbath, now you about to quit It's like with every commandment, they want the opposite Meanwhile, you staying positive, you need a job to live uh, A couple questions and settle that Like, would the father have us living check to check? Subject to payments buried by several debts I'm thankful for this life, but I pray so heaven's next I am so thankful for being alive Today was a good day, I opened my eyes Yeah, I woke up today so many can't say the same, I can't complain, I'm thankful for being alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know why I'm living, my purpose is serving others. Never despise the Father's correction, I learned to love it. Carnal minds don't want the truth, they want their version of it. Really, riches are temporal, I noticed them turning colors, his treasures are never tarnished. Started to study harder, it made me a better artist, they asking me what's your secret. He fed you manna from heaven, you wanna run to Egypt? Talking choppers like, am I really my brother's keeper? You are if you love your people. We living like kamikaze, ambulances, cops, and sirens. When we gon' stop the violence? Quote the scripture, it's the aqua silence. I can sing a song that'll calm the climate. Don't just talk about it, we walk about it. The covenant, our fathers forgot it. We remember now it's a door for the sheep to enter. Believe on Christ and you gon' be saved. I'ma keep it simple. Get that Holy Spirit I in you and so keep it in. I am so thankful for being alive. Today was a good day. I opened my eyes, yeah, I woke up today, so many can't say the same, I can't complain, I'm thankful for being alive, I am so yeah. thankful for being alive, today was a good day, I opened my eyes, yeah, I woke up today, so many can't say the same, I can't complain, I'm thankful for being alive, yeah. All right, let's see here. Hopefully the mic is on, y'all. All right, let's see here. Hopefully there we go. Let's see here. All right, Hopefully there the we go. Cool. Right. 
Shabbat Shalom, y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I'm happy that y'all are here with us. Heard the mic, but can't hear you. Okay, cool. Thank you, mom. Hey, Chatty. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Hey, hey. Shabbat Shalom. I think it should be good now. Yeah, I think we should be good now. Uh, I'm going to make sure I'm turning it up. Shabbat Shalom, yeah. everyone. Yeah, we good. We good there. The second beat. All right. Yeah. All right, everybody. Welcome on. Go ahead and take a few moments to share the live. You never know who'll yes. be blessed by the information, who's just yearning for some sincere love, right. um, some sincere truth, and, and breaking of the bread. Um, there are some people who just may be waiting on a word from the Most High today. Yeah. So go ahead and share it. You don't have to put no thought in it. We share everything else, don't we? You know, so I'm sitting here trying to figure out why I can't see. I don't have my glasses <laughs> on. in your hand. And they're in my <laughs> hand, y'all. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm looking all into the, uh, looking all into the uh, uh, computer here like this. Like, why can't I see? And I got my glasses in my hand. Y'all gonna pray for me this morning. <laughs> my equilibrium was off. I was yeah, tripping for real, tripping. tripping. I don't know what was happening with me. You know, goodness that's okay. gracious. That's okay. And my granny say, "Great day." <laughs> yes, it's a blessed day. <laughs> Excited to be before you all today. Yes, just time. trying to give you all time to get some people into the room. Yes, Let's see interact who's... with you. Who's on? Yeah, I'm gonna see who on so far. Hey, hey, yes. Jasmine. Hey, yes. hey, Mama. Shabbat so shalom, Jasmine. Shabbat shalom, on. Mama. Give us a thumbs up or heart if you shared it. Yeah, so y'all know Shabbat means uh, uh, seventh day, but Shalom means peace. So, you know, we're having a peaceful day, day of rest, yes. you know. So, hopefully y'all are. I am going to share this feed, y'all. Do me a favor, and if you can, please share the feed. We yeah. are diving in today. Y'all know uh, we've been on our faith series, Imuna. And I gave TGCB Sorry. some homework doing a um, Bible study. Doing Bible study uh -huh. that has really been going phenomenal, y'all. We, we have didn't. had a great time yeah. um, just coming together to talk about what the Father's revealing unto us as we're looking into the Hebrew breakdown mm -hmm. of the words we use all the time in our walk. Yeah. And it has just been a beautiful experience to see and hear and fellowship Shabbat with shalom, people Jones. Um, who are looking to get the hidden treasures of the word. Yeah, and, and so far, y'all, it's been it's been phenomenal. Uh, not only when we're diving into our, our word, because everything we're finding out revolves around imuna faith. And so we're diving deeper into it. And not just that same old scripture that everybody pull out that the faith is the substance of the uh -huh. thing. Hold for it. No, it, it's way, way deeper than that, so y'all. And we're exploring. That's the, that's the basis, but yeah, it's not the depth. Absolutely. So you know. we've been exploring. And TGCB has been doing good with the homework assignments. Not only that, they are learning how to actually write Hebrew yeah. They're learning how to read Hebrew and understanding the breakdown of each alphabet, each letter, and the function of it. And man, they have been doing, y'all have been doing good, TGCB. Yeah, Anybody okay. else want to join in? Y'all are more than welcome. Just yeah, let us know so that we can uh, get, get you, you the, the, uh, the, the link, the Zoom to where we do, you know, uh, uh, Bible studies. Because man, TGCB, I'm loving y'all. Y'all y'all getting in on it. But we have a treat for you today because we are going further into our Imuna series mm -hmm. And this is not just a one and done thing. What we're discovering is that everywhere we look in, in Torah, everywhere we look in the law, the scriptures, the Bible, it is all based on imunah. Y'all going to hear me say that word more than I say the word faith because I'm trying to practice making sure our language is embedded within me. So I'm not trying to sound like I'm over anybody or more educated or anything. For me, I'm just trying to make sure that this is burned and etched into my heart so that I can speak. And also burn and etched into your heart. That is. Because here's the thing. You know, the word says that my people perish from a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so ain't nothing wrong with getting a little more knowledge. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with it. It's going to be a blessing to the kingdom, the blessing <clears throat> to the people. Will you excuse kingdom. me for a second? I just want to warm up this coffee while you talk to everybody. And then we're going to come in and pray because I want you to play that song. Do my up, yeah, we play that song and we're prepped to. So um, if y'all if y'all hadn't noticed, we have... Um, we are doing our our services online here going forward. Yeah. Um, so we're super excited about how the Father's directing and increasing our online presence. That's something that Jay and I 
Uh, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, it, it is, but we, we, we don't just look for the comfort. We are looking to go where the Father tells us to go, and this is where He has told us to go. So our duty here is to be faithful and obedient um, because I believe He's calling us to reach more and teach more. Um, we just kind of getting into the text while he's uh, heating up that coffee. Um, we've been dealing with faith for a little bit, but it's because I believe that faith is one of those words that we take into ourselves as we are learning church, as we're learning uh, the walk. It's more of an observation than it is a, a true breakdown and, and uh, explanation. Um, we have on the surface taken faith to just be a form of belief. Um, and, and while it is a form of belief, she hit the camera. She hit the camera. She turned it. Okay. Yeah, she hit it. I saw it. Sorry, y'all. So one of the challenges that we have is by doing this online. There yeah, we we got a five year old. Come. Yeah. Well, you went a little too far. Hold on. Let us get it together. Right. There we. There we go. I think you moved it again after. There. Uh, too far. Uh, hold on. I ain't even touching. You I know it's device. catching up just a little bit. Okay, I think that should be okay. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Being at the house, we don't have no babysitters. We got a five year old that's running around here in the background, in in the mix, and um, that's exactly what happened. So, anywho, that ain't gonna stop nothing. So, <laughs> um, let's just get back on track here. Um, but faith has just been kind of the element of belief. And we recognize that as a belief, but it's so much deeper. It is vital. It is critical. It is uh, just, it's very big in a walk of a believer. It is the thing that gives you the right, the ability to please him. Now, um, while, while we were getting into it, I'm just going to recap a little bit while we wait on him because I don't want to go into nothing further until my, my uh, husband gets back. But... What we talked about in times past, the, the past two, I believe, Shabbats, and then in, in between the week, uh, the weeks, we talked about the breakdown of Imuna. And those of you who kept up with us, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. Those of you who haven't, I strongly encourage you go to the TGCB Facebook page and watch those past uh, videos. Okay, it's going to catch you up, bring you on board, and give you what we pray a deeper revelation. Okay, uh, but we talked about the breakdown of it. The word being spelled from right to left. The Aleph, Mem, Wav, Noon, and Hey. Um, we talked about the function of those words once you understand the meaning in Hebrew. The Aleph being the strong ox or the leader. that We, we equate that to the Most High. The Mem being waters and chaos. The Wav being the hoop, the nail. Um, the Noon being the seed, the life. The uh, Hey being to behold or reveal. Um, and we talked about, you know, that telling us how faith works and the function of faith and so we went from not just Hebrews 11 where we say now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen we come back to a, a better understanding of faith that tells us um, you know that faith is is the thing that is really going to push us to the action behind our belief it's going to push us to do that with the righteousness unto Yah that we may be held accountable to it. And so today we're going to dive a little bit deeper. And this time we're going to illustrate to you through the word uh, more than we did before because we're going to bring scriptural context and stories into account this time. Okay? Right. Let, let's pray. I, I want to pray. Uh, did you want to play the song or we just go straight? Play? No, I could play it. Okay. No problem. Y'all, let's go before Abba Yah as we let him have his way. Abba Yah, we thank you. If there's anything in our heart or our mind, our lev or our levav that is not like you, remove it. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Decrease us as you increase. Let your ruach kokma, your spirit of wisdom, guide our minds and our hearts. When we open our mouth, don't let Shamoris and Johnny speak, but Yahuwah, you speak. 
and those that have an ear to hear and those that have eyes that can actually see what you're saying father elevate them on today in their Ruah in their spirit break the shackles and the chains for somebody who is a, in a bound mindset who feel like they're in a place that they're stuck and they can't see their way out Abba Yah if we don't understand Imuna, we don't understand faith now, Father. Help us where we are. Your word said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. We've never even had to beg for bread. Because you say you will supply the daily need. Well, Father, today we need freedom. Today we need your shalom. Today we need your kokma, your wisdom. Today we need your deliverance. We need your hin and your chesed, your grace and your mercy, Abba Yah. Father, today somebody needs a peace of mind. Somebody needs a relationship restored. Somebody needs their child to be brought back unto you. Some, we need to be brought back because somewhere along the line, Father, we got off on the wrong, right trail and we're on the wrong way and we're lost. Whether we want to admit it or not, I love our heart knows that we need to be tied back unto you. Father, help. Help. Help, Abba Yah. Help. Help, help Abba Yah. Help. Help. We need you more than the next breath. What is man that you're mindful? You told us that we are the apple of your eye, a royal priest to the holy nation. Father, you get all the kavod, the glory. Thank you. Todaya, Todaya, Toda Raba, Todaya, Toda Raba. Father, free that woman who stopped in a bound situation and don't know how to get out want to but afraid to get out go to where she is now Abaya help the man who is stuck Abaya in his own way because of foolish pride fools despise wisdom Abaya we don't want to be foolish help us help the scared the confused Father, we don't have all the answers. We don't. But we know if, if we truly turn our heart towards you, we repent, turn from our wicked ways, you'll hear us from heaven. You'll begin to heal our land. Father, help us to understand more than we ever have before. We need you and be with the family of the young lady that was killed, Abaya. Senseless killing. Father, your word told us that in the day our eyes will fail us because of the horrors that we will see. Our babies are being tormented and killed and we can't do nothing about it. Oh, but Yahuwah is on his way back. He's on his way back and freedom is coming. You thought you got away with it, Hasatan, but the spirit of Yahuwah rebuilt you off of our households, off of our families, off of our ministries, off of our jobs, off of our homes. We don't have to take what you present to us. This false evidence appearing real. We don't have the spirit of fear. We have all victory through Yahuwah. And as a king in this era, I speak and I declare your freedom should you believe it. This is all about whether you believe it or not. We can pray all day long, but if you don't believe it in your heart, what sense does it make? Nothing will happen until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Faith without works is dead. Abba Yah, we will work the fact that we believe in you. And how was that? Because we will follow your Torah, your laws, statutes, and commandments. We need 
you on today. Wake up, Jacob. Help us to wake up, Israel. Our brothers and sisters from everywhere. And it don't have nothing to do with color. It has everything to do with them shifting their hearts to you, Abba Yah. The Jew or the Gentile. But let it be called righteousness unto us, Father, when we follow your Torah and your ways. Call us friends. Speak on today, Yahweh. Use the woman. Use her on today, Father, as you've given this word. Decrease her so that you may increase. Let your Ruach Kokma flow through her veins like living water. And should you have me speak on today, it's not Johnny or Pastor. It is Yahuwah who speaketh unto your people. In the name of your son, Yahushua, Ahamashiach, we say Amen and Shalom. Hallelujah. Well, I just want to encourage you all right now where you are in the midst of your worship. Just to put your hands together for the almighty, sovereign, high, holy mm. king. Glory, glory, he glory, has glory, glory, been glory. better than good to you. Glory, glory, he glory. has been better than good to me. And sometimes we just glory. forsake his faithfulness. Ah, glory. We forget the promises he gave that we still have, by the way. Oh, the and we get caught up in what we can see. And y'all know you can hear us while the audio uh, is here. The video is, is, is frozen. But we're working on that. But that's okay. As long as you can hear me, you can hear him. We're going to be alright because faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And hearing of the word of the Most High. Hallelujah. Hasatan. Hallelujah. See, you really think just because you froze this this camera that we ain't going to stop. Man, frozen camera or not. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going and let the, the Father cord. use us. You know what? The card is in. Let me see something really quick. If I go Hallelujah. to. But we're going we're gonna to continue to worship. Yeah. You know, because that's what's missing for a lot of followers is the element of worship. Yeah. Especially those of you who aren't going into an assembly where we can encourage each other in worship. Some of us are staying at home. We're not going out to the place of meeting. We're not coming amongst like-minded believers. Flowing in the pit of our despair. And the first thing we threw out was our worship. We threw out our praise. It got too tough for you on the job. It got too hard for you in your house. Yeah. There were some we're situations that came amongst you that you didn't think would happen, that caught you by surprise, that knocked you off your game. There was some pain and some suffering and some hurt that you endured that broke you down. But you forgot that word that says, I am strongest when you are a weak. Mm. That, that scripture, that word that told us that the present suffering shall not compare to the glory to be revealed. So you threw away your worship. You laid it down and you began to cry. But not cry out for help. You cried out of the pit of your despair. That you have accepted the defeat that the enemy presented to you. Yeah. That doesn't line up with the word that the Most High has spoken over your life. Yeah, you've been stepped on. Yeah, you've been talked about. Yeah, somebody spit in your face. Yeah, somebody worked overtime to tear down your credibility. But the Father established your value. And in Him remains your value. Ooh. Do not throw away your worship. Ooh, that's worth, that's worth blowing a horn on right there. Don't throw away your praise. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Sometimes you have to fight. You got to fight for your praise. You got to fight to lift up that sound. Yeah. yeah, it might struggle in the beginning, but once you get there... Once you get to the ah. element, the essence of your praise that says, Thank you, Father. Yes. Yea, though he slay me, yet still will I trust him. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. That's worth lifting up Hallelujah. the show for, letting out a sound. That You're sound. in a season ah. of not going through. See, we always go through. Mm -hmm. That's, that's going to be consistent. He said that we shall suffer. But the key is, are you suffering in vain? Or are you suffering for his namesake? Ah, Can bless. he attach himself? To your suffering so that someone else may see that he is real. My God. Or are you one of the people 
who allows your suffering to consume you that a witness won't be able to see your faith on display that a witness someone even your enemies feel like they won because you took defeat Glory. you yielded Glory. because you Glory. didn't Glory. desire to fight they looked too big they were too strong the report of the land said this they're in this position and you're here uh, but the father says this struggle ain't had nothing to do with your suffering it had everything to do with your faith Ooh. Glory, has glory, everything glory, to do with glory. your faith it's so easy to decree and declare faith when you think of belief but you can believe anything yet it's not faith so faith is more than your belief more than your belief in him even the Hasatan believe he is my, 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 my. <laughs> the father dropped in my spirit this morning he says your, your faith has nothing to do with you doing good and being good that's not the essence of your faith. Faith is not for you to be good. Faith is not for the good to show. Because it, it, Follow me. Because he said, I will take all those things that were meant for evil and work to the good of those who love me. So you ain't got to be perfect. Yeah. You ain't even got to be good. Faith is not about being good. Glory, glory, glory. Faith is about being obedient. Faith is about being credible and trustworthy. Faith is about pleasing Him. Yes. Some of you take on the essence of faith because you just want to be good. Complete. That's what that word means. Complete. Yeah, in, in the eyesight of the Father, but we measure good in the acceptance of the world. Yeah. I'm a good person because I believe in God. And you notice, wrong people love to throw that up. You know, when they have to defend their own credibility, um, I believe in God. I'm a good person. Yeah. I do all these things that say that I'm good. Yeah. But your faith is the action in your feet. Faith is what you don't say, not what you do say. Ooh, Shamor, you know, it's going to be a lot of good people with great places, great spots in hell. I'm trying to tell you, faith. It's going to be a lot of good people with great move. spots in hell. Faith is how you move when all eyes are against you. Faith ain't about what you say. Matter of fact, he said faith comes by hearing. Yes, and hearing of hearing the word. Hearing the word. Of Yah. So if you don't have the word ruling in you, how can you have faith guiding you, leading you? My goodness. I would believe that you're void. You're empty. You're empty. And I, I could tell you, he said that his word won't return it to him, boy. So if you don't take the word in, you're empty. Yes. And what's coming to him, what's coming back to him is his word. Yes. Talk about inheritance. That's wrapped in the faith. If you go back and watch those two videos, thank you, Father. I didn't, I didn't, wasn't trying to go here so soon. But he talks about the inheritance to be revealed is in the very definition of faith. Absolutely. So when he's telling us that his word won't return unto him void, you know the word you take into you establishes you. Why? I can go scripture all day on this. Those who abide in me, I shall abide in them. Mm. It is his word that's returning back to him. Yeah. It's yeah. his word. Yeah. He says, turn away from me, you worker of lawlessness, for I never knew you because it's by his word that you will be known. Yes. Yes. But I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. Yeah, it's the name above all names. But depart from me. Yeah. For I never knew you. Yeah. You worker of iniquity. A worker of iniquity. Worker of lawlessness. So we're talking about faith because this is the separating factor. The, the essence of the Father is in your faith. Mm. It separates you from the wicked world. It separates you from the angels that disguise themselves. Or the... the uh, those demons that disguise themselves as angels of light is not just quoting scripture it's not even just taking scripture into your ear because it has to produce an action yes it has to produce <laughs> who wants to put a seed in the ground that doesn't produce come on now cuz it's wasted effort it's wasted time Hallelujah. My goodness. Hallelujah. My Hallelujah. Goodness. My goodness.
You are a spoken word. You have value. And the essence of the Father is actually in your faith. Because what happens when you have faith is there is a process of developing some things that will allow you to get to the producing side of his promise. Some of us have bypassed the promise because it's, took, it's taken too long. We got a glimpse of the vision and we wanted it tomorrow. We wanted it yesterday. We so tired that we have yielded the fight to the upper hand of the enemy. You said, I'm so tired. <laughs> you have spoken weariness in your spirit. Defeat in your heart. Speak things that Doubt not as though they were. in your heart. You have told the Father that you are useless. I can't go on no longer. I'm so tired. My soul is weary. This is too much. When he has said quite the opposite as it pertains to you. He said, I will never give you more than you can bear. So if you have breath in your body today, I guarantee you, you have enough in you for today. That's his word. My grace is sufficient. It will not fail you. But it starts in your faith because when you believe that word, then you will move on that word despite what's going on around you. Come back to Imuna with that word Mem, which is, which is the second letter. In, in the word faith, imuna, mem is, wa is water and chaos. Yeah, chaotic water is movement. It's movement. It's movement. There's going to be chaos around you. There's going to be things that are distracting. There are going to be things that don't look like what you feel. Trial and tribulation. There's going to be, be things that may be seemingly out of your control. Hmm. But he's going to anchor you through that. Because the imuna, the, the first letter, the, 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 uh, the aleph, is the strong leader. Yeah. So he's strong and he leads you through the chaos. Yes. Hallelujah. The chaotic waters. Hallelujah. And he hooks you. That's the third letter, the walk. He nails you. He bounds himself joins to together. the sea. He joins together you to the life, the seed of life. And not just your seed, your descendants. So it goes beyond you. This is talking about your children's children. Father always kept us in mind because we are his descendants. Hallelujah. He had this thing Only all to do what? out. To reveal unto us the inheritance, which is the last letter, the hay. He wants to reveal unto you the promise. We are so caught up in the surface, the earthly promise that we are forgetting that this is one phase of life. Uh. We're not after this life. We're after the eternal life. Yes. Do not put your hope, your countenance, your treasure in earthly vessels. It's going to fade. Yes. It's going to fade. I promise you what you're going, right going through right now is not happening to you. It's happening for you. Come on, and it's called grace and mercy. There's more good going on in your life right now than you may know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know it hurts. I know, I know you can't help but to cry. Mm. I know this person did that to you. I know you got rejected this way. I know it took a whole bunch of people to take you down. I know, yeah, yeah, I know you had to fight. Yeah, yeah, I know you ended up in a dark place. Yeah, yeah, I know you almost died. Yeah, yeah, I know the roof over your head ain't there no more. Yeah, 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 I know the job ain't there no more. I know the finances are lacking. I know. But I promise you they're still good. All things work. They're together. still good. See, because he heard what you didn't hear. And he's seen what you didn't see. And some of the very things you fighting to get back to are the things he already delivered you from. But because you're comfortable and you're used to it, you want to go back. But we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that today. We are. And I'm going to show you how you might have thought you had faith, but what you really had was grace and mercy. Babe, do you know going back or even looking back can cost you your life. We know it. We have seen it through the word. Spiritually and physically. I can give you one example and that should be able to tell you everything about looking back how dangerous it's it uh, how dangerous it is. <coughs> Lot's wife. Yeah. If 
feel familiar with the story, angels helped them to get out of there. Told them, don't look back. Paraphrasing it for you, they told you, don't look back. She looked back. Now she's stuck forever in history looking back. She became the example of what not to do. The example of disobedience. Word was given to get out. Father provided a way out, an escape. And when you look back, cost you your life. Now you're a pillar of salt and you become the byword the 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 example forever of ooh I don't want to do that now you're stuck in the place forever looking back now you looked at people like golly why why you just did all because you decided to look back when father was bringing you out we seen that with our people in the desert forty years supposed to be a forty day journey because of their mindset. They wanted to look back. It was better. For, it was better for us in Egypt because at least we were getting food. At least we were doing this. Have you brought us out to the wilderness to die? Question the man of Yah. Question Yah. Looking back will cost you your life, physically or spiritually. I I'm done. Let the Father use you. Okay. You said something that was so key that I'm gonna have to go back and break down. We, we talk about the salt. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth, but not that type. But, but listen, the salt of the earth is seasoning of the earth. We're supposed to taste good and add flavor to the earth. Why? Because they taste and see that Yah is good. That wasn't just a, a play that, that, was, that was giving you. Remember, Hebrew is based off a of function. It was giving you a function of how the father is taste. Well, that, that's a palate. That's something you consume. That's something you, it, it hits your sense. And you know that, oh, this is lovely. So when you have a, a uh, an experience with the father, when you dive into his world, when you drink up on his water, when you eat the bread, his flesh, you say, oh, this is good. What's good? The father. Why is it good? Because he's complete. It's everything I need. Every single day that he say I will supply your daily need. We ain't even in on the word yet, y'all. Yeah, and the father just speaking. I'm sorry. Let me get out of this. Yeah, you you go on, okay. babe. I'm hoping this Hallelujah. is blessing somebody. I really hope this is Baruch blessing somebody on today. You know, Please let me know. Uh, send a message, heart to something. We want to know if the father speaking. We do. And, and, and you know, why are we taking our time with faith? Because for without it is it is impossible to please him. <sighs> And if he is putting us in a position where faith has to be, he's demanding faith right now. We, he is exposing things. And he has already, I really believe that we have, and this is, this is just what's uttering in my spirit, that we have already tapped into the side of revelation mm -hmm. where you won't be able to buy trade, nor, uh, buy, trade or sell. Mm -hmm. So now you have to stand on truth and, you, and, and your truth has to be rooted in the faith. They, they are doing it in so many different ways. And it, maybe it hadn't hit you just yet, but it has begun. And, he's, and, and the, the thing about faith is, and we're going to get there, it does something. It develops something. It, it develops something. And I don't want to give that away just yet. So let's just get back to, to where we are today. Man, babe, if the father just wants to speak and we ain't on this, we eventually get to that. We just let him talk. Let the father have his way. You, you just absolutely. I you said it. something about we are at the time we said neither buy, sell, nor trade, y'all. It's deep. When you begin to wake up and you know who you are as far as being a Yehudi Jew, it's much more. Than just claiming that. We don't want to wake up to go to hell. Wake up meaning you know who you are but still don't follow Torah. We're beginning to claim who we are as the true Yehudi Jew. That don't sit well. With a lot of people that claim to be Jewish. When you're ish that means you're not quite what that is. A lot of them are from the Ashkenazi line. 
which is from Japheth, the northern European part. And when Yehudi is Jew, from either the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Benjamin, and uh, uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Simeon as well, but um, it's much more than you know because anytime you wake up and you begin to speak emet, I mean, yeah, emet, truth, the enemy don't like it. See, he's the prince of darkness. So what did he say? He's a, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, darkness, yeah, yeah. But darkness, if you do your research, it means ignorance. He rules you in the area where you're ignorant. And as long as you're ignorant, he ain't got no problem with you. <clears throat> That's why you don't have a problem with folks going to church. Because when, not, when they're not teaching a met, they're not teaching Torah, the law, the word that Father has intended. Satan go right up in there, sit down next to him. Oh, they were good, ain't he? Hey, he, he preaching that. It's real good. Go on the shot. It's all right. Oh. Girl shot. I don't care nothing about that. Because he know you don't know the truth. You're still in religion. See, I'm going to tell you right now. Faith is, 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 is a big deal. You know why? Because faith is the, is the key to truth. Mm, faith comes is, by hearing. It is the key to your identity. Many people in this world right now are having identity crisis. Oh, my God. Because they have been... Apart from the truth, and, and what happens is, what we have what we have seen through the word is he tells us that it's not going to be a popular thing, hmm. and sometimes what what's not popular don't feel good, it don't it don't get you excited, it's not widely accepted, it is a matter of rejection, uh, and and the narrative that we have been conditioned to time after time is through a word called success. And that success in this world means it's validation from what? The masses. Your success has to be validated to be considered success. While the Father talks about us. And, and, and listen, I'm not even talking about success in terms of money. Right. Success is in, in this world has often been set to be validated by man. It's funny to me how you can be successful on your job. But not successful in your call. Yeah. Right? Successful in your marriage or successful because at home. Because who can validate your call? What man or woman did the father say had to validate who he told you you were? But we can be successful on our job. We can receive that success. We can work toward that success. Why? Because there is someone or something that's going to validate the point of success. So it's kind of like seeing it to believe it. Mm. But with the Father, you don't have to see it to believe it. Matter of fact, it is imperative that you don't see it to believe it. That you believe it to see it. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, hallelujah. On. Father. See, we got to realize that there are functions of faith. And this is the check and balance that the Father gives us through the knowledge of His Word. Is the check and balance. People get so caught up in the law and, and, the, and the commandments and if it was done away with or not. It is the check and balance of your righteousness. How else will you know that you're righteous? How else will you know that you are doing the things that the Father should have you to do? If you don't read the manual. If you don't get instructions. And it's crazy to me how we can grab this in the worldly sense, but we can't grab this in the spiritual. See, when you go on your job, you go through training. Mm. Even for a job you hate. You receive instructions. You tell what to do, when to do, and how long to do it in order to get this. And we can buy into that philosophy for a natural piece of check that don't take care of most of what we need. We can take the overtime, the harsh conditions, the attitude, the lack of sleep, and all of that. But we can't tarry a couple hours with the Father in prayer. We can't tarry a few minutes to, to, to really grab hold of the, the, the success in Him 
through Torah. We don't want to accept or acknowledge the Ten Commandments, which is the basis. We don't want to love our neighbors. We love ourselves because we're too busy trying to get ahead. Right? We got to get ahead of somebody. Because in the world, that is the establishment of success. Being better than the next person. Do we don't <laughs> understand the function of togetherness and one. Abba Yah is one. Do you not understand when you work as one, the function of working as one, the community That's is unity. strong and successful? When Abaya had us together as a people, we all shared. We all worked together. We all communed and supped together. We were all successful as one because we worked together. When we were separated from father's function, then the mindset of idea, Greek, came in and said, you have to do this so that you can be successful. To back up what you said, the world's validation of mm -hmm. I have to get this. So it became a I versus we all together as one. It, it, it became a separation. Yeah. The enemy always separates. That's what he did when he was up there in the Shamaim in the heaven. Father said he took a third of the angels. Separation crept in. An idea crept in that I can be better than or I have to be this over you. And he thought that he could sit in the seat of Abayah and rule, which caused him to be kicked out of heaven and a third of them that he brainwashed mm -hmm. Went with them. I said that to say this. You were hitting on some mighty points about success. And us feeling like we got to get ahead and we can do better on that job. Because we feel like we have to prove something to somebody else for us to be validated when the fact of the matter is. And I used to, t I used to say this all the time when I first started out preaching. Because I felt like I had to say it because people thought I was supposed to be like dad, Apostle Coleman. And I used to tell people, I don't need your approval. So Father, you. call me. That's right. I felt like I had to say that, but as I kept going, I had to realize, I don't you have, have to say to that. Say that. <laughs> you don't. Abaya validated me and called me to be Johnny. That's the, and that's the thing when it comes to the world's success. It is infringing on a commandment that tells us not to covet. And we don't see it as such. We don't see it as such. And the, and the crazy thing about it is the underlying tone is that I can be better than you. I can be, I, really, I can be you better than you. We in the same environment. I can be you better than you. If I had your job, I can do it better than you. If I had your husband, I can be a better wife than your wife. If I had your wife, I could be a better husband than a husband. If I had your, your position as pastor, I could be a better pastor than you in that church, in the same church. But you got to understand the father calls a people unto a tutelage. He calls that people. So if you were called to be a pastor, he has a people set aside and waiting for you. Sheep the, no but 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 to, to say this, and, and I'm not going to go no, too no, far no. into this. Likewise, when we took our position in, in the pastoral ship, yes, we have some of the same people that, that fellowship with us under the late great Apostle Coleman. But there, we're not together now. We didn't take his people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We The father has his own way of pulling you to to the call. He had to go to another place. We, we weren't dwelling in the same place to take, compete, or anything. The father knew exactly what he's doing when it comes to our our call and the people associated with it. Now, that's just talking about pastoralship. But I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Many of you are called as a remnant to your own family, your own clan, to lead them out. It has the same mm -hmm. elements of pastoring. Yes. But we bypass it because of the title. It's not, no, 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 no. He, and he brings us back to the, the, the commandments. Loving our neighbors, we love ourselves. And oftentimes, especially back in the biblical days, our neighbors was our family. They were the ones closest to us. They were the ones that, that, that were a part of the assembly. Now, I want to bring us back to our faith. Yes. Let me get us back to our faith. So we talked about faith having functions. 
we talked about a couple of those functions being very critical and key in knowing whether you're operating in faith, right? If your faith has, has been established. And it was the two things. First, belief that he is. Mm. And second, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the support. That's your belief right there. Not belief of the expectation. Mm -hmm. Belief that he is. And that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when you have that belief, now you can establish anything else in the word. Okay. Okay. So that has to be sandwiched in. But today, we're going to get into a portion of, of faith that we didn't talk about before. Well, we hit on a little bit. So we talk, We broke faith down. We talked about what it means, the functions of it through the Hebrew word. Then we also talked about rooting your word in faith. What word are you standing on with your faith? We talked about, you know, how that how that really was the the, the, the thing that propelled, right? So belief supported by Yah's word that pushes you into an action is what pleases him. But belief supported by his word without the result of action is what he calls dead. Mm. And we we learned that dead is a word that means lifeless, without function, without the presence of of Yahuwah, the Most High. Right. We talked about, for some of us, thank you for grace and mercy, <laughs> the <laughs> reason that our promises hadn't come to pass is because our faith was dead on arrival. And we determined that for some and for many of us, because while we had belief, we did not support it with the Word. We supported it with the validation of man with the way things appear to be going, with how it felt, not what it was. We did not support it with his word. And we began to actually speak the words that was contrary to his word in our own hearing and heart that killed the very seed that was planted from the belief. I'm going to say that again. We started telling ourselves that it was too hard. That it was too much. That your enemies were stronger. They were bigger. That you were tired. We started having those conversations with ourselves. And while back then when things seemed to be good. And you got a glimpse of the, the promise. And you got that hope and excitement in your spirit. For what the father shows you and put into you. Now you're at a place where it's too much. It's too hard. No, it's not the right timing. No, uh... You know, I, I think I was imagining thing. You start questioning. Like, you really start questioning. Did you really see what you saw? Did you really hear what you heard? And now, that seed is dying because you've given it poison. Instead of feeding it faith through the word, feeding your faith. And he told us to feed off his faithfulness. You don't even have to do it to your own credibility. Go back to what he did do when he did it. Go back to what you've seen him do for others. Feed off his faithfulness. So that you may be built up in your own faith. Now today we're going to talk about an important part of the function of faith. The important part of the function of faith is we as a people often use faith for Abba Yah to prove he is Abba Yah. We want him to do what he said he was going to do to prove to us that it was really him. Through faith. Because we knew it was big when we heard it. Some of us who, who he gives visions to, it, we knew it was big when we saw it. Right. But our pursuit in faith is for him to prove that he is by doing it for us. Y'all, that's, that's not the way faith works. It's actually the opposite. See, faith is for us to prove to Abba Yah that we are credible. Mm -hmm. That we are who he says we are. And not what the world says, and not what your mama, your sister, your auntie, your boss, your mentor, your life coach. Not what they say. Faith challenges us. Because he has a proven track work, record of not failing. Of doing everything he said he was going to do. For thousands and thousands of years, even beyond. Faith is about us showing the Father that we are indeed credible and trustworthy so much so that we would be a good witness many of y'all want to witness his word and not experience his word mm. you got to experience his word to witness it 
How you gonna tell somebody how good the father is to bring you out if you ain't never been brought out? Wow. You can't. Because now it's just an idea. It's just a theory. You don't know how it, it what it means to long suffer. You don't know what it means to step up and say what a privilege and an honor it is to go through in the name of the Most High. Because you're not looking for the outcome. You are actually looking for the income. Wow. The in comes the presence of the Most High. In comes the he that abideth in me as I abideth in him. In comes the fruit of his spirit. In comes the reward. In comes the, the right to, to dwell amongst him. In come. Not outcome. Hallelujah. Praise you for that. Somebody write that down. I have to come back just to, just to get that. Thank you. Holy Spirit. Rohakadesh. Yes. So let's get into it. We're going to read today. Y'all get y'all word out because we, we, we've been talking. And I feel like some of y'all just don't believe us today. Some of y'all are still sitting here scratching your head trying to figure out if you're in a season of faith. Yes, you are. That's a continued season. That's an in season, that's an out of season responsibility of a believer. So no matter if you're on the good side of things, where we like uh, abundance and overflow and everything seems great, and we can get a little careless and reckless and complacent, or you on the side where, man, you're working hard and you ain't seen the fruit yet. Faith is still there. Still there. And I'm going to show y'all how it was always there. Okay? We're going to read today. We're going to read uh, Numbers. Bim, Num uh, Bimibart, that's how you said in Hebrew. I'm going to uh, Let me turn there real quick. put the scripture. We're going to be at Numbers chapter 13. Mm -hmm. And we're going to read verses 17 all the way through. And then even uh, we're going to cross over to 14. 14. And so we're going to end at uh, chapter 14, verse 12. But starting here at... Uh, 17, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Bimibart. Which is how you say numbers in Hebrew, Bimit Bar, chapter 13. So let me go ahead and put this up on the screen for you. Hopefully, y'all can uh, read it there. And Shamoris, would you do you want me to read? Uh, Miss Jones put it up there income and not income. I love it. Do you want me to read uh, from the Sefer or do, would you yeah, prefer you, to read? No, you can go ahead okay. and read. Y'all, what's up here is from the Sefer, which has the restored Hebrew names. So don't let it throw you off. And when you see or hear me say the word Eth, Eth is one of those Hebrew words that's like untranslatable. Um, but it also goes, if you see, you see the Aleph and the Tav, which our Hebrew letters are up there, the Aleph and the Tav. So we know um, who Avaya is, that, the, the beginning and the ending, okay? And it reads... And Moshe, Moses, spoke, and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe. Yeah, am I there? No, I'm at uh, 17, I'm 17. sorry. And Moshe sent them to spy out Eth the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way, southward, and go up into Eth the mountain, and seeth the land. What it is, and at the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is, and they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or or lean, whether they be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first striped grapes. Hmm. So they went up. I'm at verse 21. So they went up and searched Ethel. The land from the wilderness of Sin. Sin. Sorry about that. Yeah, Zin. Sorry. That's how he said in Hebrew. Sin. Unto Rechol or Rehab. 
as men come to Atmis. So it's pronounced Khamis, but Atmis. Kamal. Yeah. So it's Kamal here, but it's Atmis. Mm -hmm. And they ascended by the Negev and came unto Hebron, and which is Hebron or Hebron in, you know, your word. Where the Ah Amin or Achmin, the Shishai and Talme, the children of Anach or Anak, how you say it, were. Now, Hebron was built seven years before Soan and Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is Egypt. Also house of bondage. That, yeah, which means house of bondage. So the word Mitzrayim, when you see it, it means Egypt or house of bondage. It's very key for you to know in your life, period. When we talk about that. Verse 23. Verse 23 says, And they came unto the book of Eshkol, and cut down from thence a branch, which one cluster of grapes, and they bore it between two upon the staff, and they brought up the pomegranates and of the figs. Verse 24, the place called Nechal, I'm sorry about that, Nechal Eshko, which is Eshko, we said that right, Eshko, and um, Eshko, yeah, or Eshko, depending on how you do it, because of the cluster of the grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. Verse 25, and then returned from the search of the land. Uh, what they say? Oh, yeah, and they returned from the search of the land after 40 days. Let's go to verse 26, y'all. Verse 26 says this And they went and came to El Moshe and the El Aram, which they came to Moses and Aaron, and to all the assembly of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. And brought back word unto them and unto us all the assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. Verse 27. And they told him and they said, we came unto the land whither you sent us. And surely it flowed with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled. And very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalek, uh, Amalekim, or Amalekites, as you know it, dwell in the land of the Negev. And the Hittites, yeah, I pronounce it, Hittite, uh, Hittaim, the Hittites, Hittim. yeah, and the Jebusites, the Yehuvim, or Yehuv, and the Amorites, uh, the Canaanites, dwell in the mountains, and the Canaan, uh, the Canaanites also dwell in the, uh, sorry, dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan, or Jordan. Verse thirty. And Caleb still at the people before Moses, and said, "Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it." But the men that went up with them said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Wow. 32. And they brought up an evil report. I, yeah, yeah. Ooh, hear that. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying the land... Though which we have th uh, have gone to search it is a land that eat up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw eth the Nephilim. Y'all, Nephilim are the giants. That's what you call giants. They call Nephilim in Hebrew. Matter of fact, the ones that are um, they're considered the offspring of the fallen or the watchers. If you know who the watchers are, if you ever read through the book of Enoch. And they saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, and come to the Nephilim. And we are 
and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Do you want me to go over to 14 and start reading? Uh -huh. Keep going. Keep All reading. right. Y'all, let's go over to uh, chapter 14. Just flip right on over to chapter 14. And I'm going to read 1 through 12. Just bear with us on this, y'all. Don't go nowhere. There, there's a reason why we're reading this here. Mm -hmm. There's a good reason why we're trying to go line up on line and precept upon precept to actually read you your Torah and your word for your understanding, okay? Verse 14 of Bimidbar, he, I mean uh, uh, Numbers. One says, And all the assembly lifted up at their voice and cried unto the people, wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole assembly said unto them, Would to Elohim that we had died in the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, or the house of bondage. We died in the land of the house of bondage. Or would Elohim we had died in this wilderness? Exclamation. They raising their voice. And whereof? Has Yahuwah brought us unto this land to fall by the sword <coughs> that our women and our children should be prey? Would it not be better for us to return to Mitzrayim? Oh, my, I know Father can give you to break that down. Would it not be better for us to return to the house of bondage? Then Moshe and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly uh, uh, um, and of the children of Israel. And Yahshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, or Yahushua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephun, uh, uh, Jephunim, or Jephunim, which were of them the search, uh, which of them that searched at the land rent their clothes. They rent their clothes, y'all. Shemor should break that down. And they spoke unto the company of the children of Israel saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceedingly good land. If Yahuwah delight in us, then we will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against Yahuwah, neither fear ye at the people of the land. For they are bread to us. Their defense is departed from them. And Yahuwah is with us. Fear them not. 10. But all the assembly bade stone them with stones. My, my, my. It's always your people. Your own people. And the kavod, the glory of Yahuwah, appeared in the tabernacle of the assembly before all the children of Israel. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be as that believe me? For all the signs, the tav, which I have showed among them. Twelve, we're in right here. I will smite them with pestilence and dishearten them and will make of you a greater nation and mightier than they. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Whew. No, there was a lot to read, y'all. I know it was. But it's very, very important. That we go through this word and read this with y'all. Line upon line. And precept upon precept. Because it will do something to your spirit man. That will cause you the person. To be greater in Yahuwah in which he called you to be. Take it away Shemars. Please let the father speak through you. Hallelujah. Alright so here we are talking about one of. I would say a very well-known um, story within the Bible about Caleb and Joshua who scouted the land. But I, I want to challenge if you ever considered the parallel of faith in this text. 
Hmm. So we, we're going to talk about what happened here. But I'm going to pull out some things I want you to take note of. So you all know that the father gave instruction to Moses to go rescue a people that he said he heard their cry through the, uh, the, the, the burdens of their taskmakers, right? Those who was, who was forcing them to do this work. They were so relentless and so so vile and so evil that he heard the cries of the people and he chose them people and he put Moses in position to do what lead the people out. Okay, we fast forward all the way over here into Numbers. They've already taken their Exodus. Um, not only did they take that took that not only did they take the Exodus, they also promised to be to take the Most High as their Elohim. Mm. Okay. So he made a promise all the way back then that is coming into fruition now. But we realize that there was something that happened when he made the promise to this point. And it's a thing called time. It wasn't a tomorrow. It wasn't a week. Matter of fact, we all come to know that what took 40 years should have really only taken 40 days. Mm. Okay. So time is, is a key element. Uh, uh, of what's happening here so when we got to numbers 13 and 17 Moses by uh, uh, instruction of the father gave instruction to the people mm -hmm. I want to bring that up 18 and 20 so what does this come back to in our faith when the father is giving you a promise he's going to give you instruction first he's going to give you instruction pertaining to the promise we know this he did it to abraham do this and i will make you a father of many nations do this and then he said this is what you shall do you have to pack up and leave you have to separate yourself from your father and all that you know. You have to go into a place that I direct you. Oh. Well, right here, these people that he has already fulfilled a part of the promise when he delivered them out. Mm -hmm. That was a promise. And the evidence of that promise was that they are out. Okay. So now he's going to honor another part of the promise, which was um, in... Exodus 3 and 8. Go ahead and turn it real quick. Exodus, Exodus 3 and 8. <clears throat> and y'all don't mind that it slowed down. We're going to get somewhere. Just just hang on in here. Hang right. on in here. Exodus 3 and 8. Read that for us. And I am come down to deliver them out of the land of Mitzrayim. Hand. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of Mitzrayim. And to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Unto a place of the Amorites. Place of the Amorites and the, the uh, uh, Perizzites. Mm -hmm. The Amorites and the Perizzites and the uh, Jebusites. And the Hittites, mm -hmm. and the uh, hold on, and the uh, Jebusites again, mm -hmm. yeah. And where am I stopping at? That's it. So he said this before, where he was breaking them. So he gave this instruction and promise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we come over here and get into numbers, and Moses sends them out. To the very place, with the very people, with the very things that the Father said He would promise. Yeah. Or that He would give. Now, if you go up scriptures before that, you're going to see that He didn't just send Caleb and Joshua. He actually sent a representative of all of the tribes. Yep. The tribe of Simeon, Judah, Issachar, Ephraim, Benjamin, uh -huh. Zebulun. Yeah, Dan. Uh, Asher, uh -huh. Naphtali, Gad, Joseph, you know, I mean, you Manessa, half tribe Manessa, you know. So, don't you understand 
that when the Father gives you not just promise, but vision, He does it in part. Because the promise and the vision is bigger than you. It's maybe very well so that He has multiple people on the assignment. And He sends multiple people on the assignment. And He's looking for you to come back with what? Report. Not just any report or what report? Good report. All right. So now, he wants you to go look at this land, not because he don't know what's in it, not because he doesn't know what's in it, but so that you can see that where he told you to go is what he promised you he was going to take you to go. So now this is about what? This is about faith. Because see, 40 years ago, he said this. And a lot of things happened in 40 years. People got tired. People died. They went through some things. But the process that they had overcome was to develop a level of credibility and trust. I do some things for you. You see that it's real. You believe me more. You, I, you, you begin to um, graduate in your servitude with me because now you know that I'm not a man that I shall lie, nor the son of man that I shall repent. All right, now we're going to take this another level forward because I know sometimes you got to do some changing of the mind. You got to do some, I got to clean you up. I couldn't take you out of, of, of the house of bondage and put you into the land flowing with milk and honey because you don't know how to act. You don't know how to be. You don't you don't understand who I am. I want you to get to know me. This this right here is going to fade, but it's a foreshadow of the promise of eternal life. This is a foreshadow of the promise of an inherited place. This mansion that I have many rooms for you. Okay. So now he's sending them to a place with everything that he identified he was going to do back then. Yeah. Yeah. So he didn't just send two, because see, sometimes that ain't popular enough. Sometimes we, we, we need the validation of men. But what happens is we tend to get caught up in the number of things and not the quality of things. Mm. Okay? We get caught up in the quantity. What are you saying, Shamors? So in 26, he says, okay, let me scroll on up here. And they went and came to El Moshe and El Aaron. They went to Moses and Aaron and to all the assembly of the children of Israel and unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back a word. Brought back a what? A word. Brought back a word unto them and unto all the assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. Okay. So they didn't just bring back a word. They brought back what? Evidence. Evidence of the land. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's keep going. 27. And they told him and said, when we came into the land, whither you sent us and surely it flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. I want to remind y'all real quick. I don't know about y'all. If, if you have heard this story before, did you imagine that there was 10, uh, I'm sorry, 12 people that went into a land, peeked over the wall observed some things, came back down, and went and told them what they saw. If that's what you thought, you're wrong. Boy. See, the word says that their observation took 40 days. <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my, my computer about to die. Gotcha. Keep going. But it took 40 days. Y'all, that's a long time to be, to be in a seemingly foreign place. So they had not only time to gather observation, but they had a chance to taste the land. They had a chance to see, experience this land. Now why am I saying that? Because instruction came and evidence came. Okay? Now let's keep going because this is coming back to faith, right? Because we, we, we quote this all the time. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Well, we know that the Father gave this promise and here they are coming back with what? The evidence of things hoped for. Yep. Or, or and shoot, the evidence of things not yet seen. All right, come on. Because he I talks about these these great, uh, these great first stripe grapes Yeah. that I could imagine. I had to do the research on this are rare 
It may be come out in a certain land at a certain time. May have been big. Like Could have been, right? So now, you done already came back with the evidence of the things not yet seen. You done tasted and seen. Now what is left is your report. All right. So here we go. When it came down to the report, the report unto people, not unto the Father. This is unto a people. So this is your witness. I'm getting excited. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. This is your witness. You are now a person who have experienced the word and have evidence of that word coming to a people who hadn't experienced and had no evidence to tell them that it is real. So what happened was they got back with the report and they said, oh, it's surely flowing with milk and honey. And here is the fruit. Everybody's able to see. So now everybody's excited. Couldn't you imagine? They've been gone for 40 days. It's a long time to wait. Now they come back with the evidence. They look like they in good health. <laughs> they look like they have maybe a seemingly good time. And you were excited about this because the father told you that this was something you were going to get. You've been in the wilderness for 40 years. You ready to get into the land of uh, flowing with milk and honey. Some of you like that in your faith. You've been in your environment, your situation for 40 years. You've been there way too long. You tired. You ready to get to the promise. So you say. And a person goes out before you and say, well, let me go scout it and make sure this is what the father said it is. And you go there and you see, oh, check, it's that. Oh, check, it's that too. Oh, yep, here's some fruit. Oh, and here's something I can take back to show that these things exist. Now, you waiting on them to come back. They come back and establish that thing. Establish that the word was true. Established that the word was true with evidence and then have enough nerve to say what I'm about to read to you. Come back and follow me y'all. I'm going somewhere with this. So let me get let me get back to it. My thing kicked me out. I'm in the wrong book. Hold on y'all. I'm in Exodus. Let me get back to numbers. Oh okay. I was about to say I got it right here if you want me to okay. put it up for everybody to see the number. You can. We're going we're going to uh to 28. All right, I'm gonna put it back up there for y'all. Now we just established that the word was true, and we had the evidence to prove that the word was true. And here comes the word that starts the report. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak, uh, Anak there. And the uh, Amalekites dwell in the land of Negev, and the the uh, the uh, Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites and uh, dwell in the mountains, and the uh, Canaanites and, and also uh, dwelling by the sea and by the coast of what we would call Jordan, Yarden. Mm -hmm. So now the very same fire you lit in the people who was excited. You just sprayed that sucker down with the water of fear. Why? Because you say, even though these things are true, these people strong. The wall is too high. Man, they great. There's a whole lot of them. And we even saw the children of Anak there. These people dwell over here. You know they tough. And them people over there, they tough. And oh, the Canaanites over here. And, 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 and the Hittites over there. And oh, they even by the sea. So you basically saying that not only is the wall too high, but every area you could think to try to go in have somebody stronger than you in it. Mm. Ooh, wait. He told them early, go see the strong land who are there. Look at everything. Yeah. But then the father said, but then you have one who rose up. Mm -hmm. One out of all twelve. Yeah, y'all. I know y'all about to say what about Joshua? We go. We gonna get there. But right now, Caleb rose up. Caleb rose up, and he said he stealed the people. That means as this report now, this witness now is coming forward, hey. the people got worked up. Yeah, y'all. They come they down. started talking amongst themselves, getting loud, getting fearful, kind of chaotic, and couldn't be controlled because fear just wrapped them. What happened? They believed this big report from all these people until one stepped up and said, wait a minute, let, calm, calm down. I know 
That seemed like a whole lot. But, 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 but calm down real quick. Moses, I just want to tell you, let's just go up there and take it. We are people who can overcome it. And then that man that went up with him said, hold on now, because I'm a punk. I'm scared. I know what I see. <laughs> and me and mine are not going up there. I'm paraphrasing, y'all. Yeah. He said in 31, we be not able to go up against the people. They stronger than us. And then what happened? That good word yeah, that make, proved true. I got to make sure they see this, can read this. He says, and they brought up an evil report. What made that report evil, y'all? What made it evil was that it, contra it contradicted, I couldn't even get that out, contradicted the very word of the one who bears a good report. Boy. Now, now what, what was that good report? Let's go back to it. He said, I am going to bring you out of Mitzrayim, bring you out of house of bondage, unto a land, a big land, a large land, flowing with milk and honey. Yep, that was Exodus, matter of fact. Exodus 8. Let's go back to it Let's real quick. Exodus 8 real quick. Let me, let, me, let me jump on over to Exodus chapter 8. Y'all, we getting there. I'm telling you, we getting there. Just just tear with us a little uh, while longer. What, what verse you. was that? What verse? Eight. Okay, chapter 8, verse 8? No, 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 no. Exodus 3, chapter okay. 8. I mean, verse 8, sorry. All right, Exodus 3. three. Chapter, uh, yeah, Exodus 3, verse, verse 8. eight. Mm -hmm. And again, and I am come, the Shahua speaking, I am come down to deliver them. Y'all yeah, got to see my face on this one. <laughs> Y'all yeah, got to know. I am come down to deliver them. Talking about our ancestors, our people, our great grandmamas, grandfathers, and his uncles and cousins. To deliver them out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, house of bondage. And to bring them up out of the land unto a good land. Taking you out of bondage and bringing you into a complete, a good land and a large land unto a land flowing with milk and honey key words ain't it blessings uh not only blessings but health well yes. he, he's sitting here saying these are the attributes that will let you know you are in the place that i have promised you mm -hmm. he said that it is flowing with milk and honey yeah that 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 it is going to be just like this and then Moses gave instruction and said, I want you to go see whether the people be strong or weak or few or many, whether it be good or bad, what cities they be that they dwell in. Are they in tents or in strongholds? See, he wasn't asking those questions so that the people may take fear. He was asking those questions as a plan and strategy of attack. Come on. He wasn't concerned about what the answers was to those questions when it came to the position of overtaking the land. Yeah. He wasn't sending them to ask if they should overtake the land. He was sending them as spies to infiltrate a land to collect enough information to bring back a strategy for the fight. Wow. Hmm. Now, he said, what the, uh, what the land is, is it fat or lean? Whether they will be what? And then not only that, he knew he would have to help a people who got this message 40 years ago get the fire in their butt about going to go get what's theirs. All right. Now, y'all, we still on faith here. And this is all going to make perfect sense in just a minute. What verse are you? Oh, I, I j had jumped back up to... Uh, Okay. To to uh, nineteen. And well, 20. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take this off so it just be the picture. All right. All right. So let's get back down to the part where things changed. Let them know what verse you're on. I am. I'm gonna I'm jump back down. Okay. Let's get back down to thirty two. Thirty two. So right. they was in this place for for forty days. They came back. They got the people excited by proving true what the father said the, was going to be in the land, mm -hmm. only to tell them that it's too much. They can't have this land. And then fear grabbed the hearts of the people and they brought an evil report. This evil report 
that told them they couldn't have, they couldn't do. And, and he said, which I'm going to just read 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying that the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants. Y'all make that make sense. If th if there are a lot of people in the land, how the land eat them up? That's a large land. He basically saying that the people in this land devours those who aren't from the land, <laughs> and they seen it happen. Hmm. And all the men there are of great stature. And keep going, y'all. We saw the Nephilim there. The giants. The sons of Anak. Which come of the Nephilim. You know, they seen a whole bunch of them looking like Goliath. Yeah. Okay. And we were as grasshoppers in their eyes. Like we were so small they didn't even see us. We, we, didn't, we weren't even on their radar. Flip, 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 flip. Right? Now, now we got going over into 14. And the assembly, y'all, now that the bad report is on the scene. Now, mind you, everybody got the report from the Most High. Okay? This was the journey. This was what was going to make the journey coming out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, worth it. This is the promise we're talking about. You have a promise resting over your life. And all the hell you went through to get out of bondage and then the, the struggles you had in the midst of the wilderness was to get you to this place. To develop you for this place. And somebody got ahead of you and came back and told you while they experienced the goodness of it. While they could see the credibility of the word. They decided that you weren't able to have that because you weren't strong enough. Because they weren't strong enough. And you believed it. Okay. So, you, you ain't the only one. See, they did it back here too. I just want, want you to know that. They did it back here too. So, back here, once they heard that, Caleb done stuck his head up and told them that we can do it. No. The other one said, no, nah, man, you wrong in this case. And the people believed the evil report over the good report. Man. How do I know that? In 14, he says, and all... Not some, not many, not a few. All the assembly lifted up their voice and cried and wept all night. You know why they cried? Because they had their hopes up. They had their expectations on the promise. They went through hell and high water to get here. And then the father going to quit. He going to set them up for a situation that they can't have. Had them happy to get the promise. Had them thinking that they was going to taste the land of milk and honey. Oh, he's such a devious guy. He done broke my heart. He ain't true. He ain't did what he said he was going to do. I'm so tired of working on this job. I'm so tired of the rejection behind my gifts and my talents that I'm just going to quit. I ain't even going to try no more. I don't work so hard. You know what? What my mama said was right. I ain't never going to make this invention real. I ain't never going to get to this side of it. I'll never be a business owner. I'll never have this. I'll never be able to do this. So many people tried to warn me that I was getting my hopes up. Oh, and they cried. And they cried. And they cried all night. Mm. In that cry, they forsake, forsook the father. They forsook the good word. The good report. They forsook their promise. You know what, what bothers me? Father give you what you pray for. He shows you. And then you come back to somebody else to ask them to pray for you and with you for clarity. You want to bring it clear? Oh, it's clear. It's right there. Now you can see the words behind Yeah. So we can still stay on the scripture. But you've been asking Father for clarity. You've been asking for Father to bring you out. He shows you and he's doing it. But you come back and you want extra prayer to make sure that what the Father is showing you is really the Father. Well, you, you didn't need one person validated. You needed ten. Why? <laughs> then the Father said already, I will bring you out. We second, that, that is a form of doubt. It is. Because what happens is there's somebody who, who puts, puts a resource in place of your promise. You're supposed to own something. They open the door. You walk through the door and you saw 10 people running out. 
What you running out for? Man, it's been too hard in here. It's been too hot in here. I can look at you right now and tell you, you ain't ready to walk through that door. You ain't strong enough. What you just got a slingshot and a rock, you gonna need more than that. Some giants on the other side of this door. Man, your small business won't survive over here, don't you know? You got Fortune 500 companies in the midst of this. Don't you know? Your idea is too small. It ain't good enough. It'll never survive over here. That's what happens. We got 10 people who didn't have the fortitude, didn't have the faith, didn't have the belief, didn't have the trust, didn't even have the credibility. Because when did they ever bring somebody out of something? Moses brought them out. Oh my. He at least brought them out. Like he went against the one that had them oppressed for almost a 400, over 400 years. 430. And then they still had enough nerve to say, this person, when he had seen the promise, came back and told me that it was established, but then told me that I couldn't do it. And I believed him versus the one who went against the great Pharaoh with the great army, with a greater God that split the Dead Sea and showed that he was in favor of me. We just going to throw that out and believe a no-name somebody. A, a representative without credibility. He don't have credibility. When can I look back over you and say, oh, you tried this and you proven yourself? None of them. None of them have the credibility. Can I say something as a title, Pastor? But I'm going to talk to you as Johnny. When the Father has spoken to you Directly, he did not need to come to Pastor Jay or Pastor Shamoris to get our approval or validation to what he told you to do. That's right. That's when the right. Father speaks to you directly, Miss Jones, <laughs> Mama, Shay, Jay, Johnville, Johnville, Walter. Yep. Tish, Chasman. Tish, mm. Chasman. Yep. Whoever, uh, uh, Jenna, Jarrell, Mimo, Who whoever else? else will watch this message. When the Father speaks to you directly and gives you the assignment, gives you the promise and say, I will be with you, He tell you to do this, you do not need my approval. You do not need some more support. You don't need mama and daddy's approval when Abaya, the one who created you, created your mama and your daddy, created everybody else who you're looking for validation for, you don't need our validation. Right. His word is established. The heavens and earth will pass away before one tittle of his word will go away. His word will not come back to him void. Y'all, please understand when the Father is speaking to you direct, get what is yours. And give him the glory. Yes. Let him get the glory out of you. Stop letting just anybody help validate you because they may mean well, good intentions. Pastor Colton said this and I love it. Good intentions ain't good enough. That's right. They may have an intention to help you, but if it's not lining up with Torah, what Father said, don't It'll listen. Fail Please, y'all. Matter of fact, it's an enemy to you. Please, that's an evil it's a it's a it's a it's evil a, report. It's an evil report. When he now, said do something, you go the opposite. I don't know how plain to put it. Coming back to fourteen, because we got to wrap this on up. All the children of Israel murmured against Moses, the one who brought them out, and against Aaron. And the whole assembly said unto them, Would Elohim that we had died in the land of Mizraim, or would Elohim we had died in uh, uh, in the wilderness? He they basically saying. Did he, did he want us to die in, in Egypt? Did he want us to die in the wilderness? But either way, he wanted us to die. And then they said to one another, Woo, y'all, you got to understand, this is vital. Let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt, to Mitzrayim, to the house of bondage. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So, so many things have happened to develop faith from the exodus to numbers 
They have not only seen the presence of the Father, they have tasted the manna from the sky. They have feasted and chewed on the quail. They have had the water. They have experienced the cloud resting on the set apart tent that Moshe would go in. They have experienced him thus far. Not that he had to prove, mm -hmm. but he took the time to showcase the people. He did it without delay. Tell them that if they would make me their Elohim, that I would make them the, uh, their people, uh, my people. And they said yes. And he said, okay, tell them I'm coming down. Because see, I need them to see that it's not you, Moses, that it's me. Mm -hmm. Tell them to do A, B, C, and D. Again, instruction and faith. Instruction and faith. And they witnessed by fire. And by cloud of smoke, and by thunder, and by lightning, the Elohim, the presence, the power, the strong force, force the might of the Most High, Holy, Sovereign King. And after seeing all of that, and receiving all of this, they got to the point where not only did they put up an evil report, they thought they had enough strength <laughs> to resist and fight the one who brought them out. So what is crazy? You will find yourself being more bold in fear to fight what is for you versus what is against you. My goodness. Make it make sense. If you could only take that courage to the enemy with the father with you then you would have probably walked into your Canaan a long time ago Ooh. but what happened was you let an evil report rob you of the ability to be of good courage and some of us we didn't just receive a evil report we were the evil report we came back down to a people who were looking to us with the expectation and hope of the faith we declared by mouth and watched us fold, watched us cry, watched us curse the Father in our heart. Why did you do this to me? See, we start, y'all don't understand, that's cursing the Father. When you start blaming and questioning Him about the things that He did that affected you without any regards to the benefit of the Father's hand in your life, you cursing Him. Why did you take him from me? First of all, he was mine. Mm. And I found use for him this way. Use for her this way. Why did you take my riches? First of all, it was my riches. Corbion. Why did you put me in this situation? That is coming to him foolishly. That is cursing him in your heart. When you start to bypass accountability. When you start to bypass the opportunities of development and change. Because he did say the present suffering shall not compare to the glory to be revealed. So sometimes you are so at just you so excited about a piece of something. That you would deny yourself the fullness of something. Mm. Because. The piece of something allows you to get content. You didn't want to be useful. You just wanted the, the to use. You didn't want to be useful. Because the piece of something you would have seen wasn't enough. You would have realized that while things seem great, there is a work to be done. You ha would have realized that everything that you have is because of the Father. So you don't need that. You just need the Father. We, we, we just, we, we miss it in our faith wall because we claim the faith of belief, but we don't root it in the word to be established. And how do I know it's not established? Because when it comes to the, to the witness and the report, it died. The witness and the report is what shows the establishment of your faith that brings you the evidence of what not is yet seen. So when Caleb rose up, he's seen the same thing. He witnessed the same thing. He went to the same place. He went through the 40 years. And when he came back and gave the good report, it was consistent with the promised report that was given by the great I am, wrapped in the word of the great I am, 
They should have been on fire. Mm -hmm. They should have been excited. But they chose the evil report. So much so that they would build up an army of resistance by first recruiting a captain. How you going to replace a captain that is taking you as a chosen people to the promised land with someone who does not have the credibility or the ability to do and lead anything? How you going to let fear deceive you into thinking you have the strength to fight off the Almighty if you couldn't overtake the doggone people in the land that he promised you was yours. Prophet is not welcome in his own home. It is often time those who you love or you know look at you and don't look at you as being credible enough to speak life into them or lead them because they figure they know you. They know where you come from. They're looking with the natural eye versus the spiritual eye and listening but not hearing what the Father is saying. You're too quick to want to take everybody's validation of you and it's pulling and leading you all different ways. Father told the disciples about that. Be careful of the lechem. Don't eat of their bread, the Pharisees and Sadducees, because the bread is the word. And depending on how hungry you are, when you sprinkle a little yeast or man-made doctrine or other people's doctrine idea in it, it's no longer Abayah's Torah. It's no longer his instruction. You're now operating in a new Torah. You're operating in a new law and instruction, and it will cause you to get off track from what Father Father has called you to be is very dangerous to listen to any and everybody because any and everybody cannot speak into your life that's why our father says try the ruah by the ruah try the spirit by the spirit but also he says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and any tongue that rises mm -hmm. against thee ye shall condemn so what happens is you buy that evil report you don't even say anything back you sit here and listen to people tell you about your vision, about your promise, about your ex your idea, even in good intentions. And sometimes it's the closest people to us. They tell you, you know, you've been trying to do this business for so long and, and you're struggling in your finances. You got to go on out here and you, you just need to let that go. It's been too long. And while they love you and they mean well, you sit back and you listen to it and then you start to consider that maybe it is time to do something different. Maybe it is time to lay down the promise that the Father has given you. Now y'all, this isn't a natural standpoint, but he but but I'm gonna tell you, it didn't start natural. It started spiritual. And that's the part that we got to we got to figure out, we got to remember. When it is a natural manifestation, it came from a spiritual output, a, a spiritual input. That is the essence of faith. See, when you take it into yourself, the outcome is going to be consistent with the promise. Mm. It's got to be consistent. It's got to work. How it works may not be what you take in your mind. But he said, I will do exceedingly abundantly above what you think, imagine, or ask. So the deposit, that measure of faith that he gives you, he's going to go far and exceedingly abund what you can visualize, wrap your head around in that measure. But it ain't about the measure. More than it is the process of what? Developing credibility and trustworthiness. And this is what this whole story was about for us. It was about a nat a, not just a natural but a spiritual promise. That shows how time is supposed to develop a level of credibility and trustworthiness with the Father. So many of us, while we have been exposed to faith. We haven't operated in the fullness thereof. And what the Father will do for us is allow grace and mercy to be on the scene while we're struggling with the establishment of our faith. In the case it. While we're struggling with the belief that He is and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. While we're struggling with the functions of faith. And then he says, you know what? I have shown you so much. I have given you so much. Now I have to push you to the other side of credibility and trustworthy. I need you to see that I can't trust you. I need you to see that you're not credible. Because if you don't see it when I show you, you're going to continue to walk in this error. And you won't please me. And you won't get 
you, you're gonna your grace is going to expire. Grace this, runs out. This mercy is only going to take you so far. And y'all got to understand that what faith puts us in is a position of discipline and obedience. So if you're not walking in discipline and obedience, you're really not walking in the fullness of your faith. And not only that, if you don't bring accountability and correction to it, it becomes rebellion. Ooh. Which is how you get on the other side of faith to not having it. This is how you trick yourself into believing that you have faith and you don't. So when you get before him and he tells you to turn away from him for he never knew you, you're going to fire back with didn't I do this, that, and the third. And he's going to say, turn away from me, you worker of iniquity. You weren't disciplined. You didn't follow my instruction. You just used my name. Come on, come you on. You just used my name. We are in a season where it is imperative that the righteous be separate from the wicked world. We can't look like them. We can't smell like them. We can't move like them. We can't behave like them. And faith is the essence of the Father that separates us by behavior, by smell, by sight, by, by, by uh, credibility, and by trustworthiness. And you don't have those things. You don't have his essence. You don't have the fruit of the Spirit. I'm here to tell you right now that where we are is not because you couldn't have what he promised you. It's not because what he has for you is not coming. It's not because the enemy is winning. It's because he's showing you that you're not credible. He's showing you that you're not yet trustworthy. And he's showing you so that you can get this part right. Because what is happening is time is winding on up. This ain't going to be about no house no more. This is not going to be about a car no more. This is not going to be about these bills no more. This is going to be about your ability to dwell amongst him just directly. This is going to be about the inheritance and the promised place. This is going to be about Yahushua Shahamashir returning. And claiming his people as his own. And you look like the world. You smell like the world. You stink like the world. And you chose the world over him. He told us. He said. Uh, 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 hold on. It's, it's, it's right here in my spirit. I got to say it. He told us um, to not. It's, it's, it's with the. Uh, what profits a man. There we go. To gain the whole world. And lose his soul. Ooh, your soul you is in your faith. Your essence of the father is in your soul. And if the essence of the father is not present in your faith. You have the idea without the works. Ooh. You have the belief without the action. And none of it makes sense. Therefore it cancels itself out. Because you no matter what you say. Are going to always behave your belief. What are you doing? Ooh, oh my God! Father was speaking through you on Hallelujah. that so 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 fluently, and this, this whole word is about: Are you credible? Are you trustworthy? Let me tell you how important being trustworthy with the Father is. This scripture has been said, and I said this on Wednesday, but it's been taken and flipped and said wrong. You got to listen, word upon uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. Proverb, mm -hmm. wisdom, Kokuma. Mm -hmm. Proverb, Nisheli, chapter 22, verse 1. It says this, and it's bold. A good name mm -hmm. is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. A good name is to be chosen. What name are you choosing? What name do you have? What name do you stand on? Are you credible? Matter of fact, is your name credible? Is your name trustworthy? Because my name has to be synonymous with Abba Yah. That's right. Why? Because I'm a representative of Yahuwah. I'm a representative of the Yehudi, of the Jew, well, let of me, Yisrael. Let me challenge this. If Yahushua Hamashiach is the head, is it not his name that's on the body? We are many members. It's not going to be Shemoris, Johnny, Jay, uh, and, and, and whoever else. The, the people name without is a head. Name. <laughs> people without a head have no identity. 
If you <laughs> are flying in the morgue and your head is detached from your body, they have a hard time figuring out who you are. As a matter of fact, they can call as many people as they is they want to in there. If you ain't got a head, they gonna scratch they they gonna scratch their own head for a moment. A, a moment. There has to be some other distinguishable factor, which I, I bless the father for this. He said, not only will I set my name on your forehead, I set it in your right hand. So when your head ain't on your body, they're going to start to examine other parts of you to see the name. The righteous is the, the righteous power. Name. Yes, but we just as a people have to get out of the surface of things. We got to get out of this. We put all our treasure in earthen vessels. Yes. We do. So when the world don't agree, something got to be wrong. Y'all, he said, wide is the gate. I mean, uh, wide is the path to hell. Narrow yeah. is the path to heaven. Narrow. It's not going to be popular. Some of you got to stop looking for being, uh, for people to validate you and walk in validation. Walk in validation. You are who he says you are. You are yeah, you wonderfully was, made. You was all of what he said you was the minute you was born. It didn't matter if your you mama died. You it didn't matter room. if you was molested. It didn't matter if you came up through the horrors and the evils of this world. You always were who he said you were. You always are. And it is up to us to receive the goodness of the Father to the glory of the Father. Don't receive the goodness of the Father to the glory of the world, the glory of your own name. Your name ain't nothing. Mm. It ain't nothing. And that's the difference between self-righteousness and righteousness. Self-righteousness is when you do these so-called identifiable good works to the glory of your own good name. So you can say, I am a good person. You can say, the whole world acknowledge me as good. Whereas the, uh, the righteousness of a person ain't even resting in their own identity. It's resting in the identity of the Father. It's when people can see your faith on display. They can see the essence of the Father. And before you can say a word, they say, here come the man of God. Here come the woman of God. Oh, no, 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 no. Put, the, put that beer away. Oh, no, 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 no. Put that cigarette out. Oh, no, we're not supposed to smoke weed in front of him. No, we can't. No, that is the set-apart person. That's not because they're special in the sense of self-righteousness. It's because their faith has been on display. It's because the Father's essence is on them. And he can't come around somebody and they not want to clean themselves up. Girl! Is that not what happened to Moshe in the mountain? There is no way you can have an experience with the Father in it. It is not a life-changing thing. When you are in the presence of the Father, there is something that happens to you that transfigures, that transforms you. And when you walk away from having that time with the Father, the glory, the kavod that was upon him is so bright upon you, you have no choice but to be like, you know what? It's yeah. something about you because even the people couldn't look up on Moses see, when he came down. That was a transfiguration that supposed yes. to take place in your life anytime you have a moment and be in the presence with they the Father. They didn't even want what Moses had. Man. They, 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 got, they got scared of it. And the crazy thing about it is oftentimes the set apart people can see that as a form of rejection. When the truth of the matter is, you can't be on holy ground without your feet being bare. And most Ooh. of them don't want to take their shoes off because their feet so doggone dirty, right? You don't want to clean up. It's not that you, you can't. You just will tell yourself, because you want to do this, you can't have this person around because you're not supposed to do this in front of them. Mm -hmm. And you don't, want, you don't want to clean up. And I'm not saying Shamoris is somebody special. I'm not saying that at all. But if the essence of the Father is louder than my, my flesh, if the essence of the Father is, 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 is you can see coming, you're going to choose. Just like the doggone demon-possessed man did when, uh, when uh, Hamashiach came uh, off the boat and onto the land. And he was like, he couldn't even get away fast enough. Can I use me? Can, yeah, I, can yeah. I open up and use me in hopes that this will bless somebody? Y'all... There comes a time in your life where you have to choose whether you want the Father or whether you want the things of the world. I'm going I'm to I'm open me up because I've dealt with this. And I, I'm at a point in my life where what you say about me, I could care less really because you have no heaven or hell to put me in. What matters to me is the Father saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. I struggled with pornography hard and it wasn't one of those things where it just instantly went away right what made me have to choose is the fact that apostle coleman sat me down 
He said, son, listen, I love you. But I love God more. I cannot allow you to teach the people because you're contaminated. Mm -hmm. And whatever you speak unto them, you spew the contamination on them. He said, son, I got to sit you down. You're going to have to choose whether you want the father or whether you want this. And when he sat me down, y'all, I, I said this before. This is one of the greatest things that ever happened because for the first time in my spiritual life with the father, before I even woke up to what I am now, I was forced to make a decision. Choose you this day, life or death. So I had to go through the process because I knew there was a call on my life to become pastor, right? I was minister at the time. I had to make a decision to change my life. Now, was it easy? No, y'all. That thing was a fight. It was a struggle because I allowed it in me for so long and it laid dormant that it was comfortable. Yeah. It and that was my go-to. It was my stronghold. But I had to really choose. Father, am I going to be with you or do I want this thing in the world? And that's why my faith had to be exercised. Because I had to go to Apostle Coleman a lot of times in counseling. Because it's embarrassing yeah. to have an issue and have a great name. Mm -hmm. People know Johnny. Oh, Johnny rap. Johnny can dance. Johnny funny. They knew Johnny. But they didn't know the dark side of Johnny. They didn't know the Johnny that struggled with pornography. They didn't know the Johnny that was married and struggled with pornography. They didn't know the Johnny that wanted to be divorced. They didn't know the Johnny that was ready to get away from his wife. They didn't know the behind the scenes journey, which caused me to have to work my faith in Father delivering me completely from that stronghold. Mm -hmm. Listen, y'all, if you have a stronghold that you're still battling with, you have to fight. No, it is not easy. But the promise of the land that Father told you that you can possess, it is worth fighting for. Yes, it is lonely. Yes, you may get misunderstood. Yes, sometimes you're exposed and you got to fight back from being exposed because now your name has been soiled. But, but when you give up your name and you take up on his name and you begin to transform and transfigure and allow Father to work you through his Ahava love and his your faith in him, his establishment, you begin to be better one second, one minute, you become one hour, one day at a time, the transformation takes place until you no longer desire them things. Now listen, the enemy is always going to dig through your trash to see what he can get to help make you fall. There were times I stumbled and went back to it. And y'all, it did not feel good. And when you get to that point, we're looking back. Remember we started out with this. We're looking back can cost you your life. Spiritually or naturally. If you have never had the father lift up off of you. It is a hurtful thing not to have the presence of father. And you watching everybody else be able to worship and pray. And you're pretending just so you don't feel left out. It feels horrible y'all. But the father told me who I was. But I had to go through a delivering process. Had to go through a fighting process to possess the land. To possess who I am. To bring me out of Mitzrayim. Who I am in him. Abba Yah develops you. But yes, it can be lonely, y'all. But it can be done. It's a timing. I tell people this all the time, while yet I am human and I have to go through it too, that the thing in between uh, the, the time he speaks a promise to you and the time you get it, again, it's time, but that's called process. Process takes time. It's only a matter of time from your process to your promise. 
you have to go through the process to get to the promise. Mm -hmm. And many of us allow time to choke us out. We, we, we allow time to be the measurement of success in our lives. And the Father said, I am time. I, I'm so much time that I'm in your past, your present, and your future. I'm, I'm, I began a great work in you. And I am perfect to, to, uh, to perform it. He starts talking to us in a sense of now. Like he told me, he said, there are elements to your faith that you have to have. And I, and I have to write stuff down because he gives it to me. He said, the first thing is your belief. See, your belief is not for the outcome. Your belief is that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So that means your belief doesn't exist if you don't seek him for it. And if you don't remember and believe that he is. There is no belief that can stand apart from that, those two things. That's the basis of your belief. The other thing that he gave me as a function is that your belief has to be established. It has to be resting on the word. It has to be wrapped and rooted in his word that supports that. Because his word does not return unto him void. He's, and he told us there was no other name that he could swear upon, so he swore upon his own name, right? Mm -hmm. Then, also, your faith pushes you to action. So it's not enough to just have belief and have it wrapped in a word if you're not going to do anything. Because he said, I, I called you to be doers of the word, not hearers of the word, okay? Now, faith is always established in the now. Hmm. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's it has to be present in the midst of your right now action. It, you can't go back and slap faith on yesterday. Mm -hmm. And you can't slap faith on tomorrow that, ain't, that technically is not promised to you. Mm -hmm. Faith has to be present now. That means you cannot waste an opportunity in the midst of your process to lay down your faith. Mama. It has to be there. You have to have a made up mind. That's a part of the, it being established. Is where it is no longer the thing that is tarrying in your heart. You're not being double minded. You're not going back and forth on it. You establish this thing. You believe it so much so that now the action behind it is resting on the fact that it's a done deal. Not could have, should have, would have. Not what if. Not now that this is here that changes. No. The Father says I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Right? So now that you have established that the word that is wrapping you around your belief is not going to fail you. You're going to move with confidence. You're going to move with peace. You're going to move with assurance. You're going to move without worry. These are the things that are essential to the element of faith as a believer. It's the separating thing. Because the world is going to go by what? What Absolutely, feels good. Jones. Absolutely. It's going to go by what, what, what ministers to your, your, your emotions. Yeah. The Father don't care about your emotions. People got to understand that. Yes, he is a God of, of, of great concern and love. But it's not your emotions that move him. It's your obedience. It's you choosing him in spite of. It's not your understanding. It's you choosing him even though you don't understand. It's you choosing him even though it didn't work out the way you hoped. It's, him choosing, it's you choosing him even when everybody else left. It's you choosing him even when you fell down and you deserved to die. It's getting back up with the mindset that, Father, you said you never leave me nor forsake me. It's choosing him in spite of. That is what moves you to action in faith. You're not trying to start again with the belief. No, the belief is already established. That's why he gives you a measure of faith, not several measures of faith. That measure he gave you before you was ever in your mother's womb and before you came out and realized that there was a such thing as faith is the same measure. Till you come back home. It's the same measure. Right? And then obedience is the lifeline to your faith. Hmm. Obedience requires discipline. So yeah, you might start off a little bit bumpy. But over time, you should be more and more disciplined and more and more consistent. Because grace and mercy is in, going to show it. you the benefit of trusting him anyhow. He don't mind you dusting yourself off. Getting back up and trying again. He don't mind that. Because you're still in pursuit of. Which brings you back to the establishment of what? Your belief that says I believe that he is. And that he's a re rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So in order to get up and dust off your knees. You have to seek him again. Seek him what? For forgiveness. Seek him what? For instruction. Seek him for what? The way. He said if you acknowledge me in all thy ways. That I would direct your path. So you come back to him again. That's the diligently seeking him part. Romans 3 and 23. For yep. all have sinned and come short of the glory of Abaya. So he's calling us as a people 
to understand the function of faith so that we may improve the things that show us credible and trustworthy to him because the credibility and the trustworthiness is what pleases him it is what allowed Elijah to be able to call bears out of the forest onto kids who were mocking him not because they I, I, I used to be like no but they was kids no they were evil demonic influenced people who 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 could not uh, discern the essence of the father on Elijah they, if they had the audacity and the boldness to attack the man of Yah, they'll go out there and do much worse to those who are innocent, those who are still still trying to find their way. You know, I, I hope when I gave the um, story of me, I hope that didn't embarrass you. At all. Okay. Uh, oh no. Uh, look, we look, we we uh, seventeen years in this thing, yeah, and I, we overcame a whole lot together. We have. But us overcoming, even in our shortcomings, even in our falls, everything had to do with faith. You're always going to have a giant. It's always going to be something that is going to try to stand in the way of allowing you to get to your promise and your destined place. But the Father's system says that it's going to work. Yes. Hasatan. Hasatan, Satan is going, he's not going to allow you to just walk in, y'all. Not if he can help it. Not if he can help it. You're always going to have a fight. But victory is Abayaz. You place on your whole armor. Why? Because there is a fight. That's a protection, a helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the sword, which is the word, and the shoes that are shod with the preparation of the gospel. You put all of Abaya on because the darts will fly. Put them in. The put them enemy in. will throw slugs and shots. You will get hit, but it will not pierce a vital organ to where you die. You will still be able to stand and walk and pursue and go into the promise, but it won't happen without a fight y'all everything is not always easy everything is not always willy nilly trials easy. and tribulations will be amongst you always so please if you understand this concept if you understand this from the rest of your life until you're gone that you are always going to be in a fight when it comes to getting to the promise it will make it a lot easier for you to function and move because yeah you know I got to keep this arm on. Yeah, I know before me, it's going to be rough. It's going to be fight. It's going to be tussling. But the Father has given me victory. I just got to go through the action and the motion. That's right. Faith without works is dead. I have to just do. I have to perform a work. That's Why? Right. Because as this thing, uh, as we say, are you credible? Yeah. I have to be trustworthy. And that's what we found with Caleb and Yahshua, they were credible and trustworthy because they believed the good report that Father said versus those who brought back an evil report. Everybody that claimed that they're your friend, even family, not everybody can walk and go into the promise but, with you. I know, and we're wrapping up, y'all. But you have to know that your enemies are necessary okay mm. with with the absence of enemy comes complacency with the absence of an enemy may even come ease and that is not the presence that the father look easiness doesn't mean that the father is there it's not the stamp or seal that says okay because this is easy, this is how I know the Father's with me. No, it's, that's not what it is. He says, I'm strongest when you are weak. It's in the moments that challenge you to rise above something with mm -hmm. the same mindset. When it was easy, that showcases the Father. And I just want to encourage you all to understand the good report and the witness. It brings us to the commandments. Mm -hmm. It brings us back to, to really what we're supposed to be doing. You may think what you take to somebody in words is your witness. That's not necessarily true. It's part of it. Wow. But what do people see when they see you? Do they see a woman of the Most High, a man of the Most High, with faith in their feet? 
or do they just hear you say these things and live another way? When they catch you outside the walls of your, your religious establishment or your church or your place of meeting, your kahel, the place where they expect you to look holy, how do you look? When you're in a hurry, when you're tired, when you had a rough day, are you still kind? Do you still have a word in your heart that you can give somebody who's hungry, who's looking for the Father, and you said that, it, that you abide in Him? That means that 24-7 they can come to you and they'll find Him. Now, I know that that may seem like a tall order, but that's the discipline of our faith. It gets us there. It gets us there. And when we fail in those moments, we don't repent one way. We don't just cut somebody out and then go back to the Father and say, I'm so sorry I did this. No, we realize that we have brought an evil report on the witness of our lives when we cussed them out because we didn't allow them to see you. So we may go the extra mile to find that person if we can and say, I was so wrong for that. I was so wrong. I'm so sorry. I am human. But let me just tell you this. And you edify them with a word from the Most High that will equip them and empower them. Y'all, that's the walk. Right now, we have to master our faith walk. Because time is winding down. Take your faith expectations off earthen vessels. Get your treasures out of this world. Don't put it in that. I'm telling you, whatever worldly promise he give you, it is to master the principle of faith so that you can have the, the eternal promise. It works on both planes. But your hope, excitement, and love for him should not be for a car, a house, a riches, a wealth, a, uh, the, no, the notoriety from man. No. And stop being afraid to be in dark places. He is dispatching some of us there so that we may be a witness to those who have been light. crying for, for help. But we see the environment and instead of shining bright, we adapt and conform like it's happening to us. When it indeed it's just happening for us. We signed up for this when we said, Father, use me. Father, I just want to be used by you. Do you Father, I just want to tell everybody about the goodness of you. I just want I just want to witness you. When you went around and said, I'm elder so-and-so. When you went around and said, I'm pastor this and I'm evangelist this and I'm prophet or prophet is that. You signed up for to be dispatched into these dark places where people could use a prophetess, where Slide people could use a pastor, right. where people could use an evangelist, where people can use all that you said that you were. And the minute you get in the environment, instead of being an ambassador and bringing the kingdom of heaven along, you fold. And you start saying, woe is me, why is this happening to me? This ain't happening to you, this is happening for her. This is happening for him. This is happening because you said, I'll do it, Father, when you declared yourself as somebody he could use. Somebody credible and trustworthy, which means you have to have an element of faith. Do you remember that message? And, and this is, I'm done here. Do you remember that message when I went, uh, when we was at Pastor Walker, Living Waters, Pastor Walker and Lady Walker's mm -hmm. church? And Father gave me that message. I can't remember what it was, but I asked the question. No, I said the made the statement that. A lot of times, we don't mean what we say. Right. We don't mean what we say. That's why because why be slow to, slow to yeah, speak slow to speak, quick to listen. Quick to listen. We don't mean what we say because when we say, Father, use me, we have to be tested and tried. We have to go through something. And then as soon as we start going through, we mm -hmm. bow out. We don't understand. I'm not going into that. No, no. But it's because of that. Y'all. We love y'all. Father spoke to you. He spoke to That was awesome. Praise him. Told I told I for allowing the Father to use and you. And we got we got to keep speak. going, y'all. Yeah, uh, if, if something was said, y'all, on today that really spoke to your spirit, I'm going to ask that consider sowing a seed into the gate called beautiful for what the Father has spoke to you. Um, there was a scripture that you know has really been misconstrued a lot, you know sowing sparingly and reaping sparingly or sowing bountifully and reaping bountifully if it's just one person and it's for you you're sowing sparingly because hey it's just for me i just need this little some people just want a little so they spare a little and that's what they get back in return some people spare uh uh, uh so bountifully and they receive bountifully because they got Which? something in place so Ain't nothing wrong Ain't, with that. There's nothing wrong with but that. But the misconception that you can sow sparingly and reap bountifully. There it is. Don't don't sow sparingly expecting. And, and expecting bountifully and then getting mad at Father because we we teach these things 
for emet truth, not because we want your money. We have to teach you why Father commanded us to give. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down. He said, if you give just this, I'm going to take it. But not only that, I'm going to give it back to you. But I'm going to press this thing down. And I'm going to add a little more on to it. Because. So, Father has always been about giving. I'm not jumping yes. in this because I need you to take money. But I would ask you to consider mm -hmm. giving unto the gate called Beautiful. As we are now going all all in on online ministry. We want to make the sorry. yeah we want to make the online experience interactive, and we want to make the online experience engaging for y'all. So uh, uh, I'm I reached out to a big brother of mine who is in media, who is phenomenal in media, and so we want to make this whole thing uh, uh, a wonderful experience because I asked the father for a community, and at that time I was thinking that you know the building wise but when we online we can reach more people that is a community mm -hmm. so you know hey we're, we're going to take finances to build what we need uh it's there if you would like to sow to the cash app it's right there um if you would like to sow through givelify the information is right there you know consider uh giving unto uh the gay called beautiful whatever the father has for you you know what i, I mean also, i'm gonna play the song milk and honey yeah, <laughs> while you talk it i also want to challenge you guys that as you are considering giving, give this way too. Share this feed. Yeah. Give this. We I, we really want to reach more, especially on an online platform. We want to reach as many people as we can. Don't be ashamed to share the word. Yeah, we have Yud Hey Vav Hey in the background, which is the Hebrew name for Yahuwah. Uh -huh. Don't let Yud that be hey, hey. Let that be a tool to witness because it, the name is going to matter. It's going to matter. Behold the hand, behold, behold the, the nail. nail. And use that to witness or use that to give people opportunity Ooh. to get knowledge for themselves. I'm going to read some of the comments here. Hey, y'all, uh, if y'all would like to join us on Bible study on Wednesdays, please let me know. Uh, you can inbox me or uh, put it on here now. I want to make sure you got the link. Uh, again, we've been giving out Hebrew homework. It teaches you how to read it, write it, and understand it. We don't just throw you in stuff without giving an understanding. Father told us to go line upon line, precept upon precept. Yes, we're different. Um, we just we, we got out of religion. We just want to empower it, and, and we got into relationship and, and Torah. We ain't no no new doctrine. We ain't in no new religion. This is Torah. You can look this up. Torah means law, instruction. It means instruction. This is what the Father says. So we're te teaching instructions of the Father. And yes, people may turn their back on you and say that you're in a different clan or you, you know, you're in this new religion, you're in this crazy stuff. <laughs> Listen, they will hate you for my name's sake. The Father already told us that. Yahuwah told us that. Yahusha told us that, okay? So I just want to give you, you know, heads up. But we would love for you to join us through Bible study. We have it every Wednesday. We have prayer coming up this Wednesday. Uh, so we'll be praying. Let me know if you want to join it. I do want to send you the link to our Zoom and also Bible study. And it's the same link. I want to send it to you. Catch you in. We're interactive. It ain't just a uh, us talking thing. We all get on there and talk. We learn from each other. We're a community. Hey, baby, you in front of the camera. We learn we're a community. We learn yeah, together. We wait. receive from each other, okay? It ain't just us always talking. We want to learn from y'all, too. And so we love that. I want to read some of the comments here. Ms. Jones said, you said everything we deal with daily, and we should remain with Father always and be ready. That way we don't have to get ready. Yeah, you're right. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Uh, Miss Cece, Miss Cece been knowing me since I was a child, y'all, in, in, in Hollywood Park. Miss Cece watched me grow up. She said, uh, gift, uh, oh yeah, refill her. She, oh yeah, she talking about you. She said, uh, God refill, uh, re <laughs> refill her. She is speaking your instruction to us. She is speaking without stuttering and without uh, apprehension. It flowed forth like the crystal waters of the river. It touched us, strengthened us, encouraged us, and challenged us. Thank you, Yahuwah. Let's see. Him, it says, All see more. To the most high. Thank you, Yahuwah, for love. So much more. Oh man, Todaya, yes. Miss Cece, Todaya, Love Toda you Raba. all. Praise she the Father. She said, "Thank you for the Cobras who are not afraid to share this gospel." She, man, we sharing the Besora, uh, you know, and uh, man, hey, this is this is what the Father does. He he uh, he speaks. You want to put it on something? You want to speak? 
I am alive. I love this song. That's my anthem, man. That is because, my anthem man, that, because that's, that's what that is. Can you play that for I me if you don't mind? I got it. Let me man, see. that that song is my anthem. I'm thankful for being alive, y'all. No matter what we all went through. Matter of fact, that was the song that I played when we uh first came in, and it's by don't the you Rock. Have, don't you have it in here to put it back? On? Yeah, but it's gonna take us out. Yeah. So we're gonna turn there. Thank you for being alive, y'all. We say Todaya. Hold on, wait a minute. Before I play this, let's let, let's pray real quick. Yes. Abba Yah, we thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father. For your word on today. It was not Shamoris. It was not Johnny. It was not doctored up. It was not to tickle the fancy or excite people in religion. Father, we just read your word. We spoke your word. The word that you gave to your daughter, Father, when thank she was you. spending time with you, Father, is phenomenal. And we understand that you're speaking, but not everybody can hear. Those that have an ear to hear, yes. those that have eyes to see what you're saying, we say, Toda ya, Toda Rabbah. Thank you, many thanks, Father, because you allow us to see and hear your clear instruction, and not everybody wants it. But, Father, I thank you because we want truth, we want emet. We give you all the kavod, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Abba Yah, we want to hear well done, my good and faithful servant. Replenish your daughter on today. As you spoke through her with your Ruach HaKadosh, your Holy Spirit. And with the Ruach Kokma, the spirit of wisdom, you spoke, Abba Yah. So that your people hear you and not us. Yes. Thank you, Yahuwah. Thank you, Yahuwah. Toda Yah, Toda Rabbah. Amen and, and shalom. shalom. Man, right, thank right. y'all so much yes. for tuning in with us today. I know today. We, we went a little longer than normal, but we, we are wrapping up our faith series. And y'all already know, we're coming with grace and mercy. So stay tuned for that. And if you haven't seen any of our faith uh, videos, this is a series. I encourage you, go to our TGCB Ministries, uh, Ministries Facebook page. Or either one of our and pages. Either one of, we always post them there. Um, and also, we're going to start expanding our social media platforms. We do have a website needs to be updated. Um, but we, we're getting some things in order. So go back and look over some of the past videos. Build yourself up. Be encouraged. Man. We love y'all. Yeah. We may be able to pay somebody to, to, to fix our web page up uh, now that we you. are online. We just want the best experience for everybody, man. We want y'all to experience Abaya, the culture of being a Yehudi, a, a Jew. We want to wake you up to who you really are in the world. This this ain't no man-made doctrine. We showing you in your Bible. I'm thankful for being alive. We gonna jam out on this. Told Daya, Miss CC, we, we ahava you. We love you. Thank you, Miss Jones. Love you, Mama. Love you, Brother Walter. Love you, Johnville. Love you, Miss Tish. Love you, Jalen. Love you, uh, uh, Cassie. Love you, Daddy. Love you, Mima. Love you, Jalen. Who else? Did I miss anybody, babe? Uh, I don't think I missed anybody, but whoever else joined on this day, man, yes, we love, love you. We thank Shabbat you. Shalom. Make it a great day. Yes. After all, this is the day Yahuwah has made. Yes, the Sabbath day we rest, which is Saturday. I'm so thankful for being alive. Well, if I could sing, I hit that note. Good day, my eyes. Today. So many can't say the same. Did it freeze up for me? Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, I got a list of the words. How many of y'all thankful for being alive? Pop me some hearts if you you here with me. There we go. They pumping them hearts. 
missed you so thankful. Yeah, it could be worse. So thankful, Abba Yah. Boy, I almost started flowing for a second. I want to. One day I'm just gonna bust out, just start rapping, freestyling on them. Yeah. So oh, many can't shout say out same. to Lady Coleman, Let Ministries. Yes, Love Lady Cheryl Coleman. Woo. So thankful for being alive, Astrid. Yeah. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Have a magnificent. What's up? You trying to play the game? What'd you play with that? Oh, the video? Yeah. Love y'all. We gonna Love y'all. We're gonna let this thing play out. Have an awesome, awesome day. Yeah.